So let's start. One minute before five. That's fine. Um, um, thank you for being here today with me. I was a little bit afraid to be alone today here, but thank you for being here with me. Um, um, I'm really happy to be with you. Here is my first event here in Germany. So I'm really happy to be with the group, uh, with the Drupal German community. So and that's it. Um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, display modes. I call my session "Get the Most Out of Display Modes." So uh, what we are going to do today is uh, see um, how. Um, this feature was improved in Drupal 8, so we are going to see how was the Drupal uh, the view modes in Drupal 7 and how they were improved in Drupal 8, and then we will see in a practical example how we can face the most typically uh, requirements for players, and you will see that uh, behind this talk the concepts are really really simple. But what I wanted to do today is to show you how to face this kind of problems in a maintainable way and a clean way in order to have a protectable um, yes, and be a little bit proud of our, our work. So, first of all, I would like to thanks to the sponsors of this event because without them it is impossible to organize these awesome events. So thank you to all of them, to the gold, <laughs> silver, and bronze sponsor. And also, I would like to thank especially to the organizers, because I know what means organize this kind of events. So if you see some people with blue, with purple, purple t-shirt, just hang them very nicely, <laughs> okay? They will not beat you, so <laughs> just be very nice to them. Okay, <coughs> so I would like to introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I'm Jose Luis Bellido, Bellido more or less <laughs> in English. So um, this picture is not for Pasna. This picture is from Drupal Days, uh, 2017, who, who take only one month ago in the year. So I'm yes, I'm Jose Luis Bellido. I have. I've been working with Drupal since 2011, more, something more than five years of experience with Drupal, and I'm working mainly with, uh, in the backend side. So I have a basic knowledge about not thinking, but not an expert at all. And yes, and was I, I was involved as co-organizer of the Drupal Developer Days this year, and yes, and I also co-organizer of the Seville local group of Drupal. We are six years old as well. So, yes, quite. So, and, okay, this is important. And, yes, I'm working, I'm happy working in Kokomo, which is a company um, located here in Frankfurt as well. And, yes, I would like to thank them because they supported me a lot in order to be here before, with you today. And also we are highly, so if you see these cards in the registration desk, and you are interested to know new opportunities, just fill them and put them in the box that is next to them. I would like, I would like uh, to work with you, maybe in the next project. So let's go to the, um, the goals of this session. Um, as I said, uh, my goal today is to give you a valid, uh, basic knowledge about how to organize your project in terms of how to organize the different views of the, your content, of your forms, and in a, in a maintainable way and a clean way. And yes, of course, sharing best practices, trying, trying to not hack uh, any country module or whatever thing. Just using the API that we that Drupal for provide us, and also we will start from the basics. So if you don't have any experience, don't be worried about it because we will start from the scratch 
and step by step we will see a, a new concepts and we will go all together during this session. And of course, this is the last session of today and the next thing is the party tonight, so we are going to start having fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. The table concept, uh, this talk is mainly, is mainly uh, split in two parts. The first one is set on the theory theory. We will see what, uh, how, what we saw in Drupal 7 with the remote and the new features that were added, added to the Drupal 8. And then the real part that I think is the most um, valuable one here in this session is the real example where we will apply all the things that we saw during the theory, theory side. So let's start. Introduction about u modes in Drupal 7. Um, first of all, I would like to say that we, what is uh, a view mode? A view mode is simply a, a way to show to uh, display a, a content in your project. For instance, you in a typical news section, you will have a list of news and the detail page of a news. A news. So. That's our view modes. The picture of the news, of the news, and the detail of the news. That's it. So every single way that you can display your content is a view mode, right? Where we can use them? We, we can use them in views, panels, and other in other parts, right? And by default in Drupal 7, we were able to use the, the default one, which is for full, teaser, and other ones like search index, search results, and so on. If you want to see it in details, you only have to go to this URL, and that is the official documentation about this part. This is, I think this is uh, something that we already know. Um, also, I would like to be sure that everybody starts from the same level. And I would like to explain what is a field format. A field format, as you know, uh, content is built by fields. So a field format is just how a field is rendering in a, um, in a, when you are rendering the content. For instance, when you are rendering an image, it can be the full size, medium, different sizes. That's is the field format. Or maybe uh, you would like to have a text just string or full size. Those will be also field formatters. And a field widget is just how the fields are rendering in a, a in an edit form or in an alt form. So it's the typical form, the field form that you see, right? You can select, for example, if you want to see a text just without, with, with a with, with or without, or maybe, um, I don't know, split it in two parts and then put all together when you say that you're not. I mean, it depends on the requirements of the project. As I said, this is a typical example. We have a new section with, where each of these news are a view mode. This is the view mode teaser where we see the, chat, the title, the body frame, and image. And then if we click here, we go to the detail page, which is this one, with the full body of the news and, and the big size of the image, okay? How is the uh, administration side? Pretty, quite simple. We only have to go to the edit to the edit page, to the, edit, uh, con uh, to the content edit page, content type edit page for it, and just click on match display and we will see here all the possible view modes that we have available and just configure our fields, in this case image and body, and select which format we would like to use for, in this case, for the default view mode, okay? By this way, 
you have everything configurable, everything, if the requirements will change, change tomorrow, you only have to go here and say, change it and export the configuration. Quite simple. You don't have to change anything in code, whatever. Quite simple, right? Okay, so, yeah, and how we created new entity, uh, new view modes in Drupal 7, it was a little bit hard because we need a custom module for defining them by default in Drupal code. The only thing that you have to do is in a custom module define the hook entity info under and that's define the, um, the view mode for your entity. In this case, I'm defining a new related view mode which will, will be attached to the node entity, right? And same for adding some new theme suggestions. We only have to um, uh, uh, implement template process node, and then we will add our suggestions to the viable theme hook suggestions. Not so complicated, but we need to call something. That means more nodes. So, as I can, uh, so some limitations that we had in Drupal 7 are no, we, did, we didn't have any UI by default. As you could see before, we had to do that by default. And what about forms? I only, I will, we were only able to modify the display, not the form itself. So, for example, if we want to have two forms of the same entity, we don't have any UI or any way to define those forms for the same entity. We have to start calling and blah, blah, to form alter and the, the, happy, the happiness comes to your life. Okay? And this is common in Drupal 7, it, it, it is not exportable. So we are not able, without using future, we are not able by default to export our configuration. Okay? Of course. This is only if, if we are talking only using Drupal 4 in 7. We, uh, we have a strong community and we have some module that comes to the rescue. Entity view modes allows us to define uh, our uh, own view modes using an UA and also display view. So that's good, but they are not important. So, any questions until now? Everything okay? Okay, let's continue then. Uh, what about display modes in Drupal 8? Display modes are quite simple, are view mode plus form mode. As you can imagine, now in Drupal 8 we have a way to define different forms for the same entity. For instance, I would like to define for a news the default form and a teaser form just for having the title and the body, that's it, okay? In a clean way, everything integrated and everything using the entity, the entity is there. So, let's continue. And as I said, now we have the four modes. They are, uh, you can find them just, if you go to the, to the uh, content, uh, content, uh, to the content type, everything form, and you will see here this tab, which is Manage Form Display. And you will not be able, you will not need to use access uh, anymore in a hook alter form. Yes, you will be able to pick the field and hide in those of them that you don't need it for your form mode. Quite simple again, right? This is, uh, I love this as soon as I saw it. Okay, so uh, how can we define those four modes in Drupal 8? We only have to go to admin, admin structure and we will say display mode section and we have an UI for defining four modes and view modes. So if we click on four modes, okay, we'll see it later. Okay. So we have now a UI for defining our view modes and form modes, so quite good. And 
another good thing of Drupal 8 is that we are now able to store our configuration and store it in a, in a folder. And we are able to deploy it in another environment and we are always uh, able to merge it and commit it and whatever we need, right? Um, yes, so also a good, good thing is that now we have the title created and changed fields available for um, moving them in the display. So if we need to show the created state, we only have to choose it and put maybe on top of the content. Quite simple. Before of this, we had to uh, do some stuff in the template itself, but now it's completely over, so that's good. Um, until now, I, I, in my experience, I didn't need any extra module. Okay? So, let's continue. Ah, uh, yes, as you, said, as you can imagine, <laughs> coming from Spain, we are talking to, uh, we are going to talk about tapas, okay? Um, thanks to the organizers for, for putting my session after last time. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, so now we are going to apply all these concepts that I was talking to you before <laughs> in a real example. I will define some requirements on a client and we are going to fail them all together, right? And step by step, we are going to achieve that. So let's start defining the requirements. The requirements are quite simple. We only, the client wants to have a uh, data content, right? Then uh, they want to have two ways to define data. A short way and a long way, right? Maybe for allowing people to uh, suggest some data, okay? And also they want to have two lists of data, one with the data most sold and the complete list of data. Quite simple. This is a common requirement that probably all of us we found in normal projects somewhere, right? I guess so. So, and also an additional requirement is that they want to have a common text for all tabs. Right? A common text, I, this is a text, but imagine whatever markup that you need. Okay? And it will be the same for all the tabs. Imagine a global message saying, hey, take this tab, whatever, right? So let's go and let's try to solve this. So um, don't be worry about the code that we are going to see now because everything is published on GitHub. So just take the concept, uh, understand the steps that we are going to do, and then at home you can check Typically, they log it, download it, and they enable it, and suggest some tasks. So, um, the previous work that I had to do for, for this, this demonstration is, of course, define a custom module, which is display mode example. I, I am quite imaginative. So, um, with, it defines a, a custom entity called tab. So. Um, maybe you are thinking to, oh, I have to define a new entity, oh, it's really hard. No, it's not. You, if you uh, are using Drupal 8, you, there is a awesome project that is called Drupal Console. With it, you will be able to generate, generate a code, a basic code for starting from scratch. So the only thing that I need to do is, I need to do is just run Drupal, uh, Drupal generate module, and then Drupal generate entity content. With that, I have my custom module ready and my entity data ready. And then I can just keep uh, working on top of that. So if you want to, if you didn't hear about this project before, just go to drupalconsult.com and you will see all the details there. Okay. Yes, my, the, this source is just in GitHub. So don't be worried about this. 
Okay, so let's start. Remember, we have to define two forms and two, two lists. So let's start with the forms. So uh, we have, we'll basic define it two four modes for, for our requirements. The, the first one will be a full tapa form. This one is the default one if you define a new entity or, or mode. And then we will all, we are going to create a new form, which is suggested type of form. This is a teaser form for uh, when people to uh, to um, suggest tapas. Okay, this is was uh, our first goal. Now we are going to define the um, the, um, the the form mode. So the only thing that we have to do is just go to administrative structure display mode and click on add new form mode. Quite simple. And then you will see this form with only this field where you have only have to define the label, suggested type of form. And remember the machine name, you will need it later. Right? Quite simple. Just click add a new form and define the label. Right? So let's continue. Now you will be, you will be you will have it available on under manage form display and you will have it able to define what fields will belong to the, this to this uh, form mode. In our example, I only want to have the name and description and I will hide the price and the and the image. Okay? Only with this quite quickly we have defined a form mode. And yes, and now we have to say to Drupal, hey, I defined a new form mode, use it. Then there are two possible cases. The first one in our case is that we created our own entity, which is tapas. So in that case, you only have to go to the entity tapas in that um, PHP entity definition, and you will find there an annotation and with all the forms attached to this to this uh, entity, and you only have to do to say, hey, add this new form. You have to use here the machine name that we uh, introduced before, remember? And then say, okay, and use this class for rendering the form. This this class is the default one that. Uh, Drupal console generates to you when you run the command, right? Quite simple. And it's the same one, as you can see, it's the same one that used all the others, right? So the other thing is, okay, this is same class, this the same form class, but with a different configuration. Nothing different, right? And if you are not the owner of your entity, for example, imagine that you have to add a new form mode to a node, we don't want to have hack code, so we only have to define hook entity type alter, and then just use the method set for plus. With that, we will be able to add our new form. Quite simple. And that's it. The, only, the last step is just define a root, a root for our form. So every, again, quite simple. Just define which which, uh, what, what path we are going to use, and then just say, hey, use the entity form, this one. This one is the same machine name that we saw before. Okay, and with this, I will call the final permission, and with this, we will, we will have a root that we saw our form mode that we configured before. Okay? And also, I wanted to have it ready for the client, so I, I don't want to say to the client, hey, access to this path, hey, but I don't see any link here. So I would like to add a link as well in order to, hey, just click here, everything simple. So this is just for having a, uh, for having a, a, um, a button in the content list for editing new tabs. And that's it. Everything is working. Okay. This is a screenshot, but it is working in, in reality. Okay. If not, you can blame me on Twitter. 
<laughs> um, I was checking it before the interview, so you can trust me. Okay, uh, continuing, uh, yes, only the two buttons for the default form. This is edited by default, and then this is the new link that we added before. Okay, and then if we click in our uh, add tab suggestion, we will see the only two fields that we defined it in the configuration before. That's it. Okay. Imagine that you have to change it tomorrow. Just go to the configuration and add with the new field, and that's it. And export your configuration. You don't have to change any code anymore, right? So there are a couple of modules that could help you a little bit. One is this uh, formal manager. Uh, I didn't check them deeply. They are not. Uh, they don't have any stable version. But the first one allows you to uh, have to do this stuff that we uh, check here today using I O U I, and the second one allows you to define some permission based on role for the form role. Uh, if you test them and they are not working, don't blame them. Just help them to have a stable version, right? Let's continue. And um, it was everything related with the four modes. Any question until now? Yeah? What happens when you try to edit? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good question. Can, can you repeat the question? Okay, sorry. Uh, the question is uh, what is going to happen if I edit the if I edit the the tapa? and which form is going to use. Okay, so the thing is you will have to define, um, I, I, I think, let's check it. I have here the example. I hit, okay, this is a list. But the thing that you probably will, I didn't have, I didn't have, uh, I don't have it in the example, but, uh, okay. Here, it, here you will find the default, uh, default edit button. It goes to the default form, okay? But if you want to have it here, you will have to define the, the new rule and just say, okay, hey, this is the edit rule and you only have to use the, the same form, the same uh, form mode that we did. That, they did, uh, that, we did, uh, that we defined before. But here I only added the add form, but it's the same. You only have to declare here. You only have to add uh, here. Okay. okay, here. As you can see, here is the edit, edit form. And the add form. So you only have to do the only thing that you have to do is add a new one, or maybe not. I'm not sure right now, to be honest. But I think maybe just defining a new uh, path with a wheel card, and then say, hey, use the edit form, the same one that here. But in this, in your case, uh, your path will use a wheel card. Anyway, that's a good question. I would like to check. If you are interested, later after the talk, we are going to check it, right? But I, I, I just like that it, it is in that way. Okay, let's continue. Uh, view modes in Drupal 8. They didn't change a lot. So more if they are mostly the same that we found in Drupal 7. So um, yes, the only thing that changed is that you are able to now to define the view modes with an a UI in the same section. You only have to click on add new view mode, define the name, and it will assign a machine name. And then if you go to manage display, you will see all the view modes available, and then you can configure each field with each formatter 
for each case, right? Quite simple again, using configuration and without any line of code. So, uh, for example, I I I, I would like to uh, to highlight this part because I uh, in my experience I see that uh, it's not always used the view mode. So I would like to say that. For instance, if you the most uh, as much as you use view modes, I think everything is more clear and maintainable. For instance, this is the same view, but don't you just with um, with a view mode or just don't using fields directly. So in this case, if you have to change something for the pieces or the image or the image, you only have to go to the configuration of the of the, of the content type. And everything, every part that use that on, that view mode will change at the same time. So it's maintainable. If not, you will see that you change it somewhere, but it's not reflecting in another part of the project. So that means time. That means money, right? And frustration. Okay. So let's continue. And yes, this is the final result. Yes. A couple of tapas, the, the tapa list with only rendering text features and the highlighted tapas. As you can see here in the picture, we have the body of the tapa description, and here only we have the title and also the um, the, um, the picture of the tapa. Okay. So another benefits of using remote, uh, you will be able to use contextual links on each row, and also that means that you will be able to use inline editing for your content. So that's good as well, and you can sell it to the client. And also, uh, you can use the view modes in, in code. For example, if you, hold, if you have to use, oh, I don't know, maybe you have to implement the hook entity view. For instance, you have available the, which view mode is rendering. In that, in that time, and that's it. And also you are able to define team suggestions based on the sign on the view mode. So that means that you have different templates for different view modes, which are good as well. So the final requirement is that we want to have a common text for all tasks. Okay? So we are we don't want to have it hard coded in the template. We want to have it configurable in order to put it on top, on down, or maybe only show it in certain view modes, or maybe highlight it temporarily. I don't know. Okay? So but definitely hard coding in the template is not the way. So um, for this requirement I'm going to use uh, silver uh, fields. How many of you already heard about pseudo fields before? Okay, so let's see that. Pseudo fields are just not a field, but they are somehow a component that you can use, uh, and it is integrated, integrated with the manage fields and manage form display section. So you are able to uh, put them up, down, or just higher. And it is everything to uh, integrate. So let's go into, and they, you can find them in Drupal core with an example of links. Links now in Drupal 8 are a set of fields that you can hide them, you can put them on top or down or, or whatever you need. And yes, and then we are going to define our new set of field for our requirement. So it will be common text. And in order to define it, we, we only have to uh, implement the hook entity as a field info. And for each entity that we want to use this uh, component, let's uh, define it. We only have to say, hey, for this entity called Tapa, for the value Tapa, I want to display this common text. And this is the description, label, description, blah, blah, blah. And return it. That's it. Okay? You can do it several times for different components. For example, imagine that you need 
um, a common image or a common marker, that's it. This is the way. Okay. So only with this, we will have this new pseudo field in our display managed display uh, form, and then you are able to do with it whatever you need. Now the final step is just define what is going to be rendering when we render this component. That's quite simple. You only have to, in our case, we have, as we are defining our own, we are defining our own entity, we only have to uh, add this code, this part is the more important, the most important one, to the build components method. The, the most important thing of this is just this, this call to this method. This will tell us if our component is configured for being rendering with this new mode. In that way, if uh, we have it hidden, this will not uh, be executed. So, again, only I code once and I configure it several times. Okay, that's the main, the main important thing. So, yes, and here we are. Okay, this is the text, and this is a pastel amaruna, it's a typical, a typical drama in Granada, so good. And that's it. And then, maybe you are asking yourself, hey, that's a very really good idea. Could I do the same, but with forms? And the answer is yes. So, um, here we are going to define a common text for all tapas form. And the only thing that changed is this part. I, we say, hey, for the entity tapa, value tapa, I want to have in the forms, I want to have a common text, which is common text form. I write imagine, uh, imaginative as well. So, and then we will have the same, okay, this is not an, there is not a screenshot, but we will have it as well in the form modes, and we can display it, hide it, or whatever. And the only thing that we have to do now is again define what is going to be rendered when I when I render this part. So it's again this method, and it checks if if it is configured for being rendering in the form mode. That's it. And let's see the final result. No, no. Uh, okay, it's not the final result, but I have it here. So, if we go to the, um, to the, I mean, to the, to the, uh, data settings, you, here you are the form mode, and as you can see, we only have configured the common text form for the default form. But, for the suggested form, we have it on top, on, in the second row, right? And for match display, we have, we have the, um, uh, okay, what is the part here? Ah, yes, it is here, okay, right, sorry. Uh, okay, for the default view mode of the tapas, I want to have it hidden, but in the insert view mode, I want to have it just next to the name. So, as you can see, again, we define it once and we can configure it. Imagine that you want to have it in another entity type. Just you have to change the, the code that we saw before here and add it, add it to the new. You will have to change this and say that, okay, I want to this common text also for notes, for notes articles, and it will be there as well for notes articles, right? And that's it. So as summary, I would say that we saw that uh, the concept behind is quite simple, very easy, but in that way, we were able to achieve some requirements without, with a few lines of code, but they are maintainable on time, and they are somehow something that we could be proud of it. Um, so 
thank you so much for being here again. And any questions? Yeah. And what about the state of use integration for pseudo or extra fields? Can you repeat, please? The state of use integration for pseudo or extra fields. Ah, uh, I don't know really. I didn't have, I didn't have to do that. Maybe, but maybe since they are, if you are in your views, if you are using uh, view modes, uh, it doesn't matter because you only have to configure the display mode. On the field level, I remember there was a contributed module with, which integrated such fields and views, but of course not sortable or uh, iterable because you start everything on the database level. And yeah. they don't exist in the database. Uh, I don't know because I didn't have that uh, requirement before, so I don't know. I will need to check it. But yes, if you use just remote, they are attached to the remote system, and if you need it in a view, for example, you will need to define your field, new, your new field in the, the new planning for view, in case there is not a more possible, maybe, yes. Any other question? Okay, so how many of you are going to go to the party this night? Sure. <laughs> That's good. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.